This week, my guest joining me all the way from Columbus, Ohio, is Lisa Brown. She's a fellow traveler like me in that she also has a show focused on helping entrepreneurs, although her angle is a little bit different than mine, and you'll you'll learn about that on the show. Her show and platform is called Side Hustle Saturday, and she says it was created out of her passion for entrepreneurship and community. She wanted to create a platform where like-minded minority business owners, side hustlers, and anyone thinking about starting their own business could share, educate, and encourage fellow entrepreneurs. Now, Lisa is a digital marketer by training. She says she has 10 years in digital mark in the digital marketing field, as well as event planning, small business counseling, and philanthropy. I have not had enough coffee this morning. <laughs> philanthropy work and she says she's always had a knack for connecting and counseling people personal or business her key talent is networking and Mm -hmm. she's living proof of that she's in columbus i'm in chicago we never met before but through her networking we now are connected and so um we're going to talk with lisa about her journey and how she got started with Side Hustle Saturday, some of the things she's learned along the way, some of the hard lessons, and maybe for some of you, you'll learn some fun things because we're going to talk really about the whole business of podcasting and live casting and radio shows and um, maybe a few tips. You some, some of you out there who might be thinking about doing the same thing or have been wondering about it, maybe you'll pick up some tips along the way. So anyway, with that introduction, Lisa, thanks so much for joining the show this morning. Welcome well, to the Savvy for having me. me. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. I'm so excited. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I, I can't tell you, you know, it's so nice to meet somebody that you have, you've never met before, but you mm-hmm. have really a lot in common with. I think we both have had some past entrepreneurial experience and maybe not everything's gone uh, quite as well as we might originally have hoped. So we share that, but then um, I think it's, it's kind of unique to take that experience and turn it into a media platform yes, where you want to share and help other entrepreneurs. So, I mean, you and I are, you and I are on parallel journeys. We're on a little slightly different path, but but boy, oh boy, um, you know, we we have a lot in common in terms yeah. of what motivates us and what drives us to do this every week. So talk a little bit about your show. Who, what is it about and who's the intended audience? Well, my show, Side Hustle Saturday, um, I started it last year during COVID. We're in a COVID lockdown, and there was a lot of things, as you know, last year that were going on. We had a lot of racial unrest. We've had, you know, we had the pandemic, and just a lot of things were going on, and I wanted to do something. I wanted to do something to give back. You know, the restaurants were suffering. Small businesses were suffering. You know, and I wanted to find a way where I could contribute to give back? How could I help? How could I be part of the mission? You know, what can I do? So I had to tap into myself with a lot of people, you know, kind of struggle with or don't know where to start. And so I started with some of the things that my pack, what I'm passionate about. I love to network. I was an entrepreneur. I love to, uh, I had a business, you know, I like to meet new people. So how can I take those things and morph them into something? And so the idea came to me to do a live show. Everybody was going live because you know why? We were all at home. So (laughs) I'm jumping on the bandwagon like everybody else. Have I ever done a live? You know, no. And I, I, I can touch on that experience, but I've never done live. I've never done Instagram live. So I was just jumping in and I was going to build it on the way up. You know, I had no experience, but I was so passionate about talking to people and learning their entrepreneurial journey. I didn't care. I'll just figure it out. 
and make it do what it do. I always say that. So um, I started Side Hustle Saturday. I um, talked to a, a girlfriend of mine and she's like, I might have somebody for you as my first guest. And it really started out as quirks and conversation. And then it morphed into Side Hustle Saturday. Uh-huh. So um, that's how I pretty much got the platform off the ground. I wanted to talk to Black owned businesses as their um and what their entrepreneurial journey was, you know, how did they get started? Why did they get started? Give me some tips, you know, what were some of your challenges? Right. And so we could learn from each other because sometimes we can get so siloed as entrepreneurs thinking like I'm the only one on this journey, but it's really not true. We're all on this journey together. So why not go on the journey together and let's learn from each other yeah. and help each other build as we grow. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Um, I did a little segment for my show that's airing uh, in just a little bit. Um, And it was about loneliness and entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. And, Mm -hmm. you know, it was interesting. I like doing those little segments, frankly, um, because it's a great opportunity to kind of learn about a topic Mm -hmm. where I kind of go, oh, you know, I read something and then I go, oh, that's kind of interesting. I wonder, you know, um, it, it, I read something about why entrepreneurs should have coaches. You know, athletes have coaches. It's appropriate mm-hmm. to talk about athletes having coaches with the Olympics going on, right? And, um, but, you know, but even, even NBA all-stars have coaches. So why mm-hmm. not business coaches? And so I started with that thread and I started reading and um, it talked about how coaching can help entrepreneurs with chronic loneliness. And Mm. I thought that's a very interesting topic in and of itself. That is interesting. And and it turns out that, um, you know, that old saying of it's lonely at the top. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Say it really flippily, but it's a serious issue for business owners you know, whether they're CEOs or founders or just the owner of the business, the buck stops with them. And it's, it's a big, it's a big burden for a lot of people. So, Mm -hmm. um, so the idea of bringing a community together, like you've done and sharing, you know, I think that's a really great thing. And it's, it, um, if loneliness is endemic to business ownership, then creating a sense of community is, if you can do that, that's a great thing. So good. Yeah. And I think that's key. You know, I think, I think there's two buckets people get into. I think they get into, this is mine. I don't want to share it. I'm right. not going to tell y'all nothing. I figured it out. You figure it out too. Right. As they're being lonely, building their business. Right. <laughs> and then there are people. I know you should be lonely too. All right. You be lonely too. Right. Exactly. So, and then there are people that are community. They are the villagers, right. you know, They are, hey, listen, this is what I did. I bumped my head a little bit. I made some mistakes. Let me tell you. I'm not going to exactly tell you how to do it, but I'm just telling you my experience and maybe you can kind of learn from that. Or, you know, I always hope with my platform, my show, if I could just reach one person that says, man, that really affected me. That helped me out. Thank you. Then I'm doing something right. That's how I feel too. Totally agree with you. Yeah. You know, it's interesting that you say that because one of the questions I was going to ask you is how you find guests for your show. And it's not just about how do you find guests, right? And mm-hmm. you alluded to, it's important to find good guests that amplify the message, right? Because yeah. I'm sure you've had one or two guests and I have too. I've, I've tried to screen against that but I've had a couple of guests who I think are more about let me tell you what I've done and all that as opposed to here's some of the things that are hard and yeah how can I help you through the hard part let's talk about the messy (laughs) let's talk about the messy and let me let me tell you what happened to me Right. (laughs) right um it's funny that you talk, I could do a whole show on guests. 
you know um <laughs> yeah as long as we tell all those guests that we've had don't listen I it is not glamorous y'all so whoever's listening to this like oh she's got so much so it is not a glamorous road to find a guest i, t- I totally agree with that guests will ghost you oh yes yeah and not just they don't answer your email guests will not even show up to the day of the interview <laughs> And I'm fortunate. I have never had that happen. And I say never, but you know, because every time I say it, I've seen it all, something happens that I haven't seen. And I'm sure I'm going to have one of those at some point. Yeah. I, you know, I can tell the real deal people that really want to share because when I was starting out, you know, I started out on Facebook and Instagram. Okay. And I started out at zero followers. And then it would grow, you know, you tell your family and friends, hey, follow me to at least look like you're doing something out there, right? (laughs) You're not just some sort of uh, account, spam account. Yeah, so the algorithms think you're doing something. Right, at least I'm doing something out here. I'm not sort of some spam account. So, you know, I and then when you reach out to people, they're looky-loos. You know, they look, how many followers does she have? Because that's just our mentality on social media. Right. You know, or on Facebook. But right, right. I can tell the real deal people when, A, it didn't matter how many followers I had. And B, when I heard, when I told them my story, they were immediately on board. They were like, I love what you're doing. Yes, I'll be a guest on your show. Right. And that's how I can tell those are the entrepreneurs that resonate and that are going to tell the story and that aren't afraid to share the story right. with the community of Side Hustle Saturday. Yep. Um, and so how I would find guests is I would look for interesting people. I mean, and I know there are other platforms out there that are doing the same thing I'm doing and that's good. And I think they're higher level, but I like the people that are on the come up. I like the people that are on the journey that are not so much the multi-billion dollar business. And that's cool because I'll probably get a couple of those people that are like, let me tell you what happened to me. And yes, I want to share. I want to get the people that other entrepreneurs and side hustlers can relate to. Like, I'm in that same boat too. Right. Yes. And oh, wow. How did they do that? And that they're touchable and they're tangible and they don't mind being reached out to or talked to. Yeah. So I look for people that have an interest, interesting story, that have an interesting journey, yeah. and that um, are out here that I can see that, you know, they're they're on their social media platforms. They have a website out. They're engaging with their community as well, right. because yeah. that is... Oh, the aha, like, okay, they're trying to build their community too. I need to talk to them. Right. And I will say there, there are amazing people out there. And, Mm -hmm. you know, it's my journey. I'm now into almost into my third year. Oh, wow. I know. I know it's time flies. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the most part, I've been absolutely blessed. But you mentioned that it takes time to find guests. I think that's one thing about podcasting or uh, live Twitter feeds or, you know, radio or, or TV. I think people who aren't in the business. Yeah. um, And I say the business, whether you're making, you know, one cent or a million dollars, but the business of finding good guests and lining them up and preparing for the interviews organizing everything and the follow-up that you do to say thank you and send them whatever uh, Mm -hmm. recording or uh, whatever other things you you know you might be doing it's a lot of work I'm sure you've had this happen to you too where you're you find somebody either through word of mouth I've joined a couple of networking associations and I've tapped into my alumni groups. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I find guests everywhere. And I do too. And it's funny. It's, you know, it's kind of like lead generation for a business, I guess. Um, Yeah. I find that you have to kind of go to events and talk to people. You have to um, 
tap into whatever networks you have, whether it's your church or, Mm -hmm. you know, organizations you volunteer with. But I found guests, people, they're entrepreneurs who, uh, you know, you're in the chamber of commerce, if you, or, you know, I do some community theater and there were people, you know, two or three people who were entrepreneurs who were guests from the show from there. I mean, it's an interesting way actually to relook at your existing network because you find that, you know, I don't know about you, but I find there are people that I, I know a limited slice about them. So, you know, maybe we're in this organization together, or maybe we have kids together in school or, you know, we're in the same church or whatever it is. And then you start asking them about what they do and their entrepreneurial business and would they like to be a guest and then all of a sudden it's like I didn't know you had your own business (laughs) that's called networking yeah I mean (laughs) that is called networking and that's why that is so key if you're an entrepreneur you gotta network yeah I'm with you I was when I first started the show, you know, I didn't know about how to get a guest. I just knew I'm going to get the <laughs> show. Either. So I tapped into the people that I knew that were on my Facebook that I used to work with that I uh-huh. knew had their own business. Uh-huh. And those were the first people on my show, you know, and I would just, after I exhausted Facebook, <laughs> then I would, I joined a couple of digital magazines, black owned digital magazines. Uh-huh. And I would just... Oh read those mag you know when I would get emails in I would see what the um, article was about I look at the news I'm a news hound so I look at the news and I love I'm old school so I like to look at magazines by hand I don't like to do the digital thing and so that helps me find my stories I'm constantly researching and now since I've been out there for a year people are reaching out to me which was like I had to clutch my pearls for a minute I was like y'all see me out here I mean you see my show really you want to be on my show they're reaching out to me like hey I'm gonna be on your show and I was like okay (laughs) I know I started having the same the same thing but I think one of the things that's really key this is not so much for radio show people because you know, when you have a radio show, you have a commitment, you have, mm-hmm. you have a slot and they're expecting airtime, you know, right. which is good. I think podcasting is actually in some ways more difficult because mm-hmm. until you build that audience, it is so easy to say, well, you know, I'm going to, I guess I won't bother this week. Nobody cares. Yeah. But, and, you know, you're just echoing what I'm saying too, which is, if you're going to start this, you need to be committed Mm -hmm. for a a significant chunk of time because it takes time to cut through all the noise and the clutter that's out there. And for people to realize you are going to keep showing up every Mm -hmm. time you say you're going to show up, it just takes a lot of discipline and a lot of faith and a lot of, you know, my, my guests helped me through. You know, there are times where I'm like, oh, God, that's a lot of work. I don't know. Can I really do it? I don't really want to do that. But but then when you have the guests, the guests, they pull me through. They do. Yeah. I would say to piggyback on that, before you even jump into these waters of podcasting and yeah. being on live and interviewing guests, you have to be passionate about it. If you're not in it to win it and you're not passionate about it, don't even jump in the water. You know, because you're going to be like, oh, I don't want to do it. And then it's not going to be fun for you. For me, I love this. I mean, I just get excited about, oh, who's going to be next? And now is it daunting because of all, it's a lot of work. Oh, it's a yeah. lot of work and I need a team now. So I'm like, oh, I'm the, I need a visual assistant. Thanks, I need no. a team. I need a no. social media manager. Because there's so many other things that I, where I want to take oh, the show and there are not right. enough hours in the day. There are not. <laughs> I, had, I was talking to a woman the other day um, who actually helped find me a guest. And she said, well, I really want to talk to you. I've really been interested in a radio show or a podcast. And I said, well, get prepared for every episode to take you about two days a week at least. Yeah. 
How could it possibly? I need to hear more about the workflows that you do because I don't believe that. And I'm like, well, oh, it's so true. <laughs> It's so true. And I still work a regular job. Okay. Oh, do you? I still work a nine to five. And then when I do my nine to five, I do my five to midnight when I come home. Well, so you're, you're, you are living the side hustle, Sadie. I am living, I am the living side hustle as we speak. So I still work, you know, I'm trying to make it so I don't have to work a nine to five. But, you know, right now that's not feasible. So I still work a nine to five. So when I say I'm passionate about what I do, I mean what I say. I mean, there's been times where my son has had to tap me on the shoulder. It's like, go to bed because I'm up my eyes. Like I've drunk a pot of coffee and I'm still tapping on those keys. I got to do this. I got to do this. And I'm not tired. You know, I'm not tired because why? Because my passion is driving me because I know that what I can make of this could be huge. So, you know, that was my, my go-to. Now, when I get to the point where like, mm, I don't feel like doing this, you know, I don't want to do it no more. Then I'm going to have to step back and reflect. And also from a mental standpoint, are there times when I have to step back and um, like, okay, let me let my brain relax a little bit. Yes, I do take those breaks. I'm not always, not always on the go. Yeah. But I would just say for anybody that's going to get into this arena, be passionate, be very passionate. And, about and it. Be, be disciplined. But, you it know, the, the passion is interesting. Somebody who was who did voiceovers, he's not in radio, but he does mm-hmm. voiceover work, told me, he said, one thing I'll tell you, he said, when you're working in audio only, especially people can hear you smile. <laughs> That that stuck with me because if you have low energy, Mm -hmm. people will hear it. Yeah, that's so true. From your perspective, what makes a great guest for your show? And what makes one not so great? One that shows up? No. (laughs) One that shows up? No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Well, they say, you know, half a life is showing up. And right. <laughs> I guess the same is true for podcasting and radio. I, one that makes a great guest is one that isn't afraid to share. Yeah. One that isn't afraid to tell the true story. Yeah. And it's not about this is what I did, you know, and it's very dry about it, you know, and they're, they're their true, what I call, like I said before, a villager. That is, hey, if you want more information, you can reach out to me. The guests that are open. Yeah. I think that makes a great guest. And and they're willing to come and talk to a community and be part of the community. And I've made some really, the funny things, I've made some associates that I can still reach out to that I still talk to. After you've been a guest on the show, and that's been incredible because, you know, like I said, you build this sense of community and I can tap into that person. And it's not just business. It's just like just somebody I can just talk to as a as a friend or building a relationship with. Yeah. Yeah, And you and I were talking, I think, before the show about something we both do, which is try to follow the companies and, you know, link with people on social media. I see their posts and what their business is doing. It's kind of like, um, you know, I, for some of them, I, I'm hooked on the story. You know, I'm hooked on their journey because I've heard the backstory and how difficult maybe some of the times have been. And so when I see them, I follow their company and I see, you know, for example, one woman uh, uh, has a medical device company, which is a really hard thing to do. Mm-hmm. And it's hard for for women in medical device, yes. there just aren't many. Um, but she, she had, I saw on social media that uh, her company, her device finally got regulatory approval. And that, that was huge. I knew that yeah. was a big milestone for her. I knew that was something she was struggling with. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I reached out and said, wow, great, great job. Um, and, you know, I try to do that with, with my other gifts because they're, you know, they're not just, um, 
but not just a disembodied voice or a face that appears. You realize mm-hmm. you, I get hooked on their story, honestly. I, I do too. The same thing. And the thing I do is I like to support. My pockets don't like to support, but I like to support as a person. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know they move. They, I need to get more pocket money to support. But you and me I both, like lady. Support, uh, <laughs> the black owned businesses that um, I interview. So if they have a product that I could buy, I will buy it. Yeah. If they have a service that will I could use, I will use it. So I'm all in when it comes to hey, be on my show. Um, and I'm going to, I'm following you on your Instagram on your Facebook, on your YouTube, wherever you are, I'm following you and I'm supporting you because why? Cause that's what a community does. Yeah, exactly. Support. It's not just, I'm going to be on my show and you know, that's it. The one thing that gets me and I know I don't want to derail is when I go on somebody's <laughs> Instagram page and they've got. 300 plus thousand followers or 1.2 million followers and they're following one person who does that I just I'm like really I was just like no you know (laughs) I don't think so yeah that just gives me so I just I'm really passionate when it comes to you know community and really sharing the experience of being an entrepreneur that's what it's all about, you know, and I, I will look at, there's some guests that I've had, I've, there's some guests that I've researched that I looked at their site, they haven't been a guest, but I was just doing my research to be a potential guest, and I'm like, mm, I don't know if that's going to be a good fit, so I've had those experiences as well, you know, when I look on their social media platforms or read their stories, I'm like, I don't know if that's a good fit. And that's okay too. You know, it might be a better fit somewhere else, but for what I'm doing and for my platform, it just wasn't a good fit. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I've had, passion is a really good thing in general, but I think sometimes people's passion gives them a little bit of tunnel vision Mm -hmm. Um, because I've had a couple of guests who were so passionate about what they were doing. They just wanted to talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. (laughs) about what they were doing and it's hard to explain to maybe people who haven't been on at many shows or different kind of pl- talking platforms but those are those are actually tough guests the story mm-hmm. may be great but it's hard for listeners what listeners want to hear is a dialogue yes you know they want to hear the back and forth because that's really where the the fun comes in I think Mm -hmm. yeah Uh, and if somebody is talking and talking and you find yourself trying to interrupt them just slow (laughs) the train down a little bit it it's you know it's a little hard because then I can tell oh I've I've derailed them and then they're like oh and oh where where was I she interrupted me you know and um, I find it funny but you know I'm sure it's hard for, for people. You know, are. I've had those guests while I was live, <laughs> I, you know, literally, and I would ask a question and they're on that one question, the very first question out the gate for 15 minutes. Yes. yes. And it's like, I don't know. I, I think sometimes, like you say, it, it could be a nervous tick, you know, that they just want to get everything in and I don't want to miss anything instead of being guided. So I would say to those people, you know, let the person guide you, (laughs) you know, you'll be able to get, you know, trust the person that's interviewing you when you're a guest on the show, because they're, if they're going to guide you and prompt you to talk about what you want to talk about, you know, absolutely. Absolutely. But it, it takes a certain, um, I think you have to have your antenna uh, working pretty well because I think mm-hmm. some people, um, you know, and and there there are these entrepreneurs, right, who just have this idea that they're just, and they are so passionate about it that um, it, it's like you know they just that it's all there is to them, and they can't. Mm-hmm. I think some of them maybe have lost perspective. And I think that does happen with entrepreneurs sometimes. I would agree with that. I think with, with passion comes focus. 
You know, you've got to stay focused and right. not derail. Right. And the right. passion is the one part, but um, the focus and a little bit of business acumen. Yeah. I hate to say that, but, um, but it's so true because, <laughs> you know, me being in um, the corporate realm has helped me, you know, be more uh, focused, be more prepared, be more structured, not so much structured in a stuffy sense, but getting the show together, prompting, the, doing the questions, it's doing a, the follow-up. It's a gigantic project plan. Yeah, it is a project plan that, you know, you just, and I always say jump in and build it on the way up. And I'm, I'm a true advocate of that. Yeah. But bring in some of those other elements too as you're jumping. Yeah. To, uh, so it's focused and it doesn't look like you just out here flailing, doing whatever, and you're all over the place, you know, just kind of bring it in a little bit. So you have that. And so you don't get at the end of the day. So you don't get overwhelmed. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. And then you just chuck it, you know, and right. don't do that. That's, you know? that's the worst thing you can do because mm -hmm. you, you, um, that then you're, then you're off the track, but yeah. So, you know, you mentioned that you've, you've had a couple of goes at being an entrepreneur and I'm, I'm, <laughs> so have I, um, and a couple of them really cratered quite spectacularly. And, um, so I'm curious about that and how that's affected how you approach the show, maybe, and even the guests that you find and, um, how, how, just how it's colored your your whole approach to side hustle Saturday, or maybe even that you even created it because of that. Well, the backstory behind that is, you know, working for somebody. You know, that's that's you know, I've always kind of felt like mm, I don't know if this is right for me. So I didn't know what I wanted to do as an entrepreneur, right? <laughs> I was looking, trying to figure it out. Or I don't know what, what. I don't know what. All I know is I don't want to work for anybody. That was my story. I did not know what my what my journey was going to be. Right. So I just wanted to do something. So right. I was throwing spaghetti at the wall, you know. And so one of the walls I threw that was eBay. <laughs> oh. I, was, I had a business on eBay, and I did. Um, I. I did consignment. So people would clean out their closet. I would sell it for them on eBay right. and we would split the profits. Right. I did that for a little bit. And then, uh, then I switched it over to, okay, I would go and thrift and resell those items. And then I switched it over to, okay, home goods. I would get home goods, home accessories and sell those items. But when I was doing that, I was doing because that's what everybody else was doing. It wasn't really what I wanted to do because that's, I knew that because I also have some retail on my background because I came from the retail world as well. And so that was like, that's what I knew. I knew retail. I knew, I love the shop, you know? And so I was like, I'll just dip my toe in that, but it really <laughs> wasn't what I wanted to do. Oh boy. <laughs> so you know I had to just keep throwing spaghetti at the wall till it stuck and what stuck for me and this was a surprise and a delight for me was this whole I you know I've never been live I've never done that I've never had to rustle guests um, to be um, I was going to say, wrangle a, guests to be on a show. That's a long way from selling consignment stuff. I know. It, like wow. I said, it was a surprise and delight. I didn't think that this is where I would end up and then really like what I'm doing, you know, really enjoying some of the things, my journey as I'm like evolving this and and, and, and people are like, can you teach a class? Can you do this? What about this? Wow. Because there are people that don't know what some of the things I know I know and what I've learned so I'm like you really want to know about that yeah I want to know about Instagram I don't know nothing about Instagram really you know and so that's surprising to me but I do that on a regular so you know circling back around um, <laughs> um I yeah I've had businesses and the eBay thing it was cool 
you know, it was all right, but I just wasn't, I wasn't feeling it. You know, I wasn't really passionate about it. And so, like I said, what surprised me is something that what I'm doing now, Side Hustle Saturday, I'm really into it. And, and it, it failed. I mean, I feel it failed because I just wasn't, I didn't want to do it. I let it fail. Yeah. No. You know, I think, I think that's an interesting angle. I've often thought that about a couple of my failures too, which were mm-hmm. that I think I did them for mine. They were both consulting businesses and mm-hmm. I think, I think I did that. Well, and, and one was another business that I did with a friend uh, they were all three poorly thought out because I had done no market research on any mm-hmm. of them, including the ones with my my two friends. We had what we were convinced was a great idea, but unfortunately, we did zero market research, uh, which is um, pretty am- amazing and embarrassing because one of the three of us was actually a marketer by training. So I don't know how that happened. <laughs> um, you know, but from my standpoint, I knew people needed the services that Mm -hmm. I had to offer. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is that most businesses fail. The number one reason is because there is no perceived market need. Now Mm -hmm. that can be, you have a bad product. Yeah. That can also cover things like you're not marketing. Your messaging is off. Yeah. Your pricing is off. uh, You're not credible. Um, yeah. you're, you know, you're, you're just not hitting your target market and you're not resonating with them. Yeah. And, um, you know, you, you, there, there are some services that there's a market for, but, uh, unless you have big time prospecting tools at your service, if there's not enough of them, eventually your business is going to wither and dry up on the vine. Yeah. You know, so speaking of though, of, of businesses that make money. So both of us have a business in a sense. Um, you have Side Hustle Saturday. I am a savvy entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. And yet one of the challenges that I wrestle with a lot is monetizing it. Mm-hmm. So I know that's that's been a challenge for you too. Um, what have you tried and what are you thinking about in terms of monetization? I am currently trying uh, YouTube. So I just launched a YouTube uh, channel. I started out on Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. And I found that, you know, I was really heavy. I mean, hitting hard on Facebook, running ads and all of that. But what I learned did, did is... That help? Did that help the ads? It did help. It, it helped grow my followers and likes on Instagram. Okay. But from a monetization standpoint, that didn't help because Facebook's platform when it comes to monetizing is a little bit difficult to monetize, you know? Um, So then I switched over to, you know, I was still using Instagram and, but I wasn't as heavy on Instagram so then I looked at Instagram. Well, I didn't like the Instagram live platform because I've had some issues with that. And, you know, my followers weren't growing as quickly on Instagram as I would see some other people because, and we could talk about that on another show, Doris, how people get followers. But anyway, you know, because I like my followers to be organic. I don't, I don't, buy, I don't buy followers. I might follow you knew you and you follow me back. I'll do a follow for follow, but I don't, you know, go out because you can't buy followers. So my Instagram really was not monetizing. That. Yeah, wasn't monetizing um, all that quickly. So I kept hearing, you know, YouTube, YouTube, because people I always say video is king. Yes. A uh, post is queen, and you just have to have a balance of the two. So. Now I'm starting my journey on YouTube to monetize. And that's it's going to be a long. Hard, that's a hard one too, though, because I read somewhere that YouTube, you know, and what we're talking about here, obviously, is YouTube and they, the little ads that even mm-hmm. before you click on it, that shows. Yeah. Them. Or in some cases, annoyingly, every about every 30 seconds, there's some ad that, that pops yeah. up. Yeah. And that's but, how you know, the yeah. creator of the, of the YouTube video in that instance, gets a little cut of mm-hmm. those ad revenues. 
But I, I read somewhere that YouTube has has changed that where you used to have, I don't know, you didn't have to have that many followers. Now it, you have to have quite a few, I think. Um, it stayed the same. Um, and I just started. So I, I'm not at the thousand followers and four thousand watch hours. I just started. Ah, okay. I just know that when people look at stuff and they look for stuff, they Google it and they bring up a YouTube video or they go on YouTube, they either yep. go on Google or they go on YouTube yep. to figure out how to, what's going on or whatever. So I, um, I just I just decided to do that because I felt like it was easier. Now, there are some other things that I'm going to be working on that's coming down the pipeline that I'm going to start monetizing on, which are eBooks. I'm going to do an eBook. I'm going to start doing classes. Yep. So, um, you know, to learn, to teach what I've learned and, and, and what I know to others that, you know, I'm assuming that everybody knows how to do this, but they really don't. And that's the biggest downfall for me yeah. is just assuming that people know how to do it and they really don't. You know, some people just struggle or they have somebody else do it with them or, you know, they're just having a hard time. And I'm thinking, oh, they, you know, everybody knows how to do that. So, you know, looking at doing some classes and some one-on-one -on -one coaching, um, looking at people's um, sites, their websites, and looking at their social media profiles and helping them just do a couple of tweaks and yeah. doing some consulting work. So I'm looking at those avenues for monetization. Those are, first, those are great. Those are mm -hmm. great. Ideas. My first year of Side Hustle Saturday was basically learning. I wasn't out here trying to monetize. Yeah. I was just out here trying to figure it out. <laughs> there is a lot. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't scare people who want to do this, but if you're out there and you're trying to do live shows and or podcasting and or, you know, any kind of other uh, social media content that you want to create out of it, it's... um. There's a, you know, there's a fair bit of process to it. Everything from yeah. equipment to mm -hmm. um, editing to, you know, lining up guests to, I, they're, they're, yeah. It is. And I, I wanted to take that full year to learn that. Yep. And so year two is like, okay, I've got that underneath my belt. What can I do next? So right. year two, I'm figuring out this whole, okay, monetization. How do I grow? How do I evolve? Yep. And so that's what I'm doing in year two. And now I need to plan year three. I should be all, you know, monetized already, starting to monetize and, you know, thinking about evolving. How can I grow? Well, all right. So you, re you just did a segue right there into my next question for you, which is where do you see Side Hustle Saturday growing? Where do you want to be a year from now or two years from now? What does it look like? Well, I might give you a little exclusive here, Doris. <laughs> I might just give you a little. You got the T-shirt going on already. I don't even have it. I got the T-shirt. I got a style, style, but I've been in having that. But this is new. I'm pretty jealous of that. I gotta tell you, <laughs> this is new tea for your show, Doris. <laughs> All right. So um, I have been um, in discussions with a um, black-owned network to have side hustle Saturday on TV. So we're, <laughs> we're talking about putting side hustle Saturday on television and um, bringing that to life that way. So I'm really excited about it. I'm not going to spill the tea too much, but I'm going to give you a little bit of sip on that. So I am, we're working out all the details. I'm working on guests and sponsors and all of that so that is where side hustle saturday is evolving is on television from ebay consignment to <laughs> tv tv rock star talking <laughs> wow that is awesome yeah uh, so. the time has absolutely flown by and lisa i'm pretty sure we could pretty much yak for i don't know <laughs> probably another hour <laughs> about all sorts of stuff and commiserating about this and that and tips and tricks and every time I talk to you I learn something new that you've tried and so it's just fun to to share ideas and what works and what doesn't work 
Before we wrap up, I have to ask you to share with folks how they can listen in to Side Hustle Saturday, how they learn more about you if they want to hear past episodes or catch your next ones. You know, maybe they want to be a guest and how should they reach out to you to do that? For sure. So if you want to be a guest on Side Hustle Saturday, first you got to show up. No. <laughs> Don't go, Lisa. Don't you show up. Don't ghost me. Now, if you want to be a guest on the show, email me uh, at side hustle main hustle at gmail.com. And if you want to see some past episodes, you can look at those episodes on Facebook at side hustle main hustle on Facebook. Or you can go to my IG at SciHustle underscore Saturday. Please follow, tag, share, follow, like. That's my mantra, tag, share, follow, like. And as I stated before, um, I am now venturing onto YouTube. So you can find me on YouTube under uh, SciHustle Saturday, or you can look up Side Hustle Saturday Hustle Talks. All right. Uh, and I don't, are you on LinkedIn too? If I am know. not on LinkedIn yet. Okay. No. Mm-mm. Well, one of these days, you know, I'm here <laughs> too. But um, it's been absolutely delight having you, Lisa. Thanks so much for joining the show this week and spending a little time sharing your story. And and it's gosh, it's been fun just you know swapping ideas and and funny stories with you. So thanks for having me. This was so much fun, and I really appreciate. Um, you allowing me to share my story and my journey and it's it's been fantastic so thank you so much well you're absolutely welcome thank you for your time and i hope folks who are listening or watching do go back out there and listen to some of lisa's episodes they're they're absolutely great and um i think you'll you'll find you learn a lot and her style as you can tell from listening is just so down to earth and welcoming and supportive. So anyway, um, I encourage folks to go check out her platforms. Well, we have just a couple of minutes left and I thought it might be interesting to talk about a common theme I've noticed with some of the would-be entrepreneurs that, that I've been mentoring lately. Whether it's an individual who has two or three possible businesses in mind but just can't decide which one to start on, or the individual that has a great product idea but just cannot decide the best way to package and market it. It seems like a lot of first-time would-be entrepreneurs suffer from a kind of paralysis. They're terrified of making a mistake. You know, it's. I think it's an interesting balance that you have to achieve as an entrepreneur because there are certainly would-be entrepreneurs that are so focused on action that they're essentially ready, shoot, aim um, people. Uh, One entrepreneur that I worked with a couple years ago envisioned a catering business, and he rushed out to buy a building and start retrofitting the kitchen, only to find that there really wasn't a market for the kind of catering business he had in mind. I, I kid you not. So if you've listened to the show previously, you do know I am a passionate advocate of market research before heading too far down your path. I failed to do that with a couple of businesses I've been involved with. And believe me, I <laughs> they caused the business to crater and uh, I lost a lot of time and money. But at the same time, every single entrepreneurial mindset tool, and by the way, that's a topic I think I'm going to dedicate a separate segment to, uh, which is the profile of what an entrepreneur looks like. In other words, do you really have what it takes to be an entrepreneur? Not just your business idea and your business plan, but are you wired to be an entrepreneur? But every single one of them emphasizes action. So there's something called the Network for Teaching Entrepreneurship, And they set out one of the key attributes for successful entrepreneurs as comfort with risk. The University of Arizona's entrepreneurial profile says successful entrepreneurs must be decisive. Others say you have to be willing to take action. Essentially, all of them do. Call it whatever you want, but you do have to just start. 
Yes, do your market research for sure. 